Ten seconds. I'd like to call tonight's Somerset Planning Board meeting to order. Anna, please call the roll. Jason Berry. Here. Jeremy Rhodes. Here. Chris Horton. Here. Robert Belmore. Here. Mark Richardson. Here. Doug Haberman. Here. Ron LaHoulier. Here. At this time, I'd like to appoint Mr. Haberman as full voting member for the evening. First item is approval of the minutes of May 15, 2024. Does anybody have a motion? Motion made by Mr. Berry, seconded by Mr. Richardson. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Next item is committee reports. The Land Use Board report is in your uh, uh, packet. Does anybody have any comments on the summary? Seeing none. Move to City Council report. Mr. Belmore, do you have anything for us? Well, I will mention that um, we've been very successful over the years in applying for recreational grants under the Land Water Conservation Fund program. Um, it's federal money that goes through the state. Uh, we've made significant improvements up in Noble Pines, also the Mass Point Dam recreational area and Jules Bisson Park. We've been very successful to the, to the thanks of our recreation supervisor, Director Mears, and other staff. And today we had uh, Senator Sheen to pay us a visit with state officials at Jules Bisson Park. Um, and we talked about the success, uh, and she was awarded a uh, presentation, a presidential award, I think, from the National Organization of Recreational uh, Directors uh, in regards to her work in championing federal money to improve parks, particularly neighborhood parks she's very proud of. In fact, she mentioned that her sister lives on, one of her sister lives on Buffinsville Road, and she goes by the park quite often and see it. it, it it's, it's, it's in use by many uh, residents, whether they're kids using the playground equipment or pick up basketball games and so forth. So it was a very uh, nice uh, presentation and event, uh, recognizing the city's efforts and the partnership with both the state and the federal government. So thank you, uh, Michelle and her staff, in coordinating that and the hard work with the grant opportunities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Belmore. Stratford Regional Planning Commission update. Mr. Richardson. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. At our last meeting, we approved the, um, um, the uh, st strategic, I'm, I'm sorry, the comprehensive economic development strategy plan for 2024, uh, which is now posted on the Stratford Regional Planning Commission website. You can go to the website and click on economic development and you'll see the, the page there for the SEDS, uh, the SEDS plan and just click on that and you can read it. Lots of statistical data about housing, about transportation, um, about um, um, all kinds. <laughs> I'm trying to think. There's a whole list of them right there in the table of contents anyway. That, uh, and there's a lot of statistical data and progressions for the future there, which are fun to read. So I'd recommend that to anybody to go look at. All right, thank you. Eyes on 30, 2030 committee. Mr. Berry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we actually met twice since our last meeting. Um, the, the first goal is just to review everything that we've done up to this point. Uh, there was a lot of brainstorming, trying to figure out the things that we really thought were value-add, things that um, should be looked into further. Uh, what we're currently looking at right now is narrowing down that list to roughly five, maybe six of the um, <coughs> top candidates that could be presented to this board as, um, as candidates for master plan updates. So um, hopefully I'll have a better report next month. Thank you. Community Power Coalition, Mr. Horton. No report. Housing Committee, Mr. Horton. Yeah, so uh, committee met last night with the SRPC. We reviewed uh, the feedback from the surveys and the eight recommendations from the SRPC folks uh, and kind of prioritized, prioritized uh, which ones we would like to coordinate with SRPC to tackle. Uh, one of the big things was uh, infill. 
and the multifamily uh, guidelines and, and such. Um, I think that the larger discussion there really was about the amount of uh, wording in the, in the zoning ordinance itself. I think it's 167 pages of uh, a lot of regulations and requirements. So navigating that was difficult for all of us. And, uh, you know, after a lot of discussion, the zoning ordinance falls under the planning board. So we may have a long-term action to go through and, and review the recommendations of the SRPC, these housing committees, and um, revisit and revise that zoning ordinance. So uh, you may see more of that in the future. But uh, also in the uh, with the SRPC, SRPC, there's a phase three to their uh, support for so much worth. So uh, I think the option for the next phase is going to be out in September. So um, we talked about that as well. So continuing the effort of looking at zoning and looking at housing all, as a whole. That's all I got. Thanks. Thank you. Next, we move on to our business. I'd like to ask everybody to please either turn off or mute your telephones or uh, other electronic devices. If you care to speak this evening, please come up to the microphone, state your name and address or your affiliation. First item on the old business is continued from May 15, 2024. Bill Doobie Kia LLC is seeking site plan approval for an automobile sales and services facility and property located at 220 and 222. Route 108 in the Commercial Industrial CI District assesses map 61, lots 10 and 11, site number 02 2024. Director Mayors, you have any update for us? Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. <clears throat> um, so this project was continued at the May 15th meeting. Uh, we have been working with the applicant on addressing the horsley Witten comments and with uh, Department of Public Works. Uh, specifically the hydrocad analysis and some drainage improvements and we've I've had a discussion with the applicant about being continued to the July 17th planning board meeting yeah we, we think it's uh, the, the best way forward here I think that there's a couple more issues we need to resolve with Horsley Witten we've been going back and forth via email so there's a solution in sight we think we should have everything resolved by July 17th okay uh, does anybody have a motion to continue to July mr. Horton uh, at the applicant's request, I move that we continue the application to the ju uh, July 17th. July 17th planning board meeting. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Rhodes. Any discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. See you next month. Next item under new business, item A, Roman Catholic Bishop of Manchester is seeking a lot line adjustment for a, pro, po, for a proposed addition to an existing <laughs> building and associated setback requirements on a property located at 10 Dolson Street and 120 Maple Street in the residential duplex R2 district, assesses map 24, lot 5, site 15, 2024, and sub number 02, 2024. Director Mayor, is there anything to add? Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. The Roman Catholic Bishop of Manchester Church submitted a site plan application to construct an addition at property located at 10 Dolson Street for church-related activities. At the May uh, 2024 planning board meeting, the board reviewed and conditionally approved the application with the following conditions. The final plan shall include the lot line adjustment modifications to ensure that the proposed building addition is compliant with zoning setbacks. Uh, the applicant has submitted a lot line adjustment plan to transfer 1,198 square feet of land to map 24 lot 6, um, uh, 120 Maple Street to map 24 lot 5, 10 Dolson Street. The purpose of this lot line adjustment is so the proposed addition will be compliant with setback requirements. And this application is complete and ready for uh, board action. Entertain a motion for application acceptance. So moved. Second. Favor, Mr. Horton. Second by Mr. Belmore. Discussion. Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? This time I'd like to invite Mr. Bruton to make his presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the board. My name is FX Bruton. With me tonight is Steve Height, the project engineer, as well as Dan Bison, the project architect, and Father Andrew Nelson is here as well. Um, we hope that this would be fairly brief. 
Um, obviously, we were in front of you um, previously. Um, before I start, I want to uh, congratulate uh, C City Manager Mr. Belmore for uh, your announcement on retirement, and thank you for your service to the city. Thank you. Um, I'm sure I'll see you some other place, but I did want to at least make that uh, statement. Um, the uh, This is fairly straightforward. I'm going to basically turn this over to Steve quickly. The only thing I had is we did receive a planner's memo with some conditions of approval. Um, there were two things in there that I wanted to speak to and very briefly. One is that, um, as you know, we're doing a lot line adjustment between the Roman Catholic bishop and the Roman Catholic bishop. So technically, um, when you have an easement, you're not allowed to provide an easement to yourself. Um, but we will provide a deed that will convey that portion and we'll have what are called restrictive covenants. So it will be the same thing, 100%, no problem at all. It's just an issue of uh, legalese, if you will. Um, but it, it will be acceptable and reviewed by your city council, so it's no problem at all. Uh, the other thing is there was a mention about escrow, which I presume in this application not necessarily applicable, but I think it was in the site plan, so obviously that's going to be there as well. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to Steve, and he'll explain uh, what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Steve Hay with Civil Works. Um, as FX had just identified and as uh, Director Mears had pointed out, this is just a, strictly a small little lot line of revision. So. Uh, you guys saw the site plan uh, last time that you approved this site, this uh, subdivision, sorry, this lot line adjustment was actually reflected on that plan. That plan uh, would be, there's no, no sense in going forward with the lot line adjustment without the site plan uh, conditionally approved, so that's why we're back here for this. That's really what. Thank you. This time I'll open the public hearing. Is anybody that cares to comment on this application? Director Mears, is there any correspondence concerning this application? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, close public hearing. Questions from the board? Mr. Belmore. Can you just clarify uh, what action the city has to take in regards to these restricted covenants or easements? And we need to change that condition from, I guess, from covenants to restricted, uh, I mean, from easements to restricted covenants. What action does the city ne need? Why do we need an easement? You, you don't need an easement. So the easement is basically, um, rightfully so, Michelle asked that if that lot, uh, 10 Dolson Street, was conveyed to some other party, uh, our plan is that the, sh the parking for that facility will be located on the church, the larger church parcel. So if it's conveyed, they would like to have in place that it's subject to an easement. So if it's conveyed, that new owner would then be able to utilize that parking and have those rights on our the larger parcel. So uh, again, because you're <coughs> in an e easement world, you're not supposed to give yourself an easement, but you can restrict your deed. And as part of the lot line adjustment, as in any lot line adjustment, we have to prepare a deed for that little chunk to go from one to the other. In this case, it'll go from the same owner to the same owner. You can do that. Um, you can't technically, or you shouldn't technically call it an easement. So for the protection of the future potential owner, which in my opinion, there won't ever be one, we call it what we need to call it legally so that it works. The city asked in their conditions of approval that the city, your city attorney review that, which is great. No, it's not gonna be a problem for us as well. So the city doesn't, quote, need to do anything, uh, Michelle is being proactive that should this ever be conveyed to some other party, it would be, all of that would be in place to protect them. Yeah. No, I'm good. I, I thought I heard city council, but maybe you said city I attorney. I meant council, not council. <laughs> city attorney. Okay. Yeah. I'm Any good. other questions from the board? Anybody have a motion? Do we do uh, Ask that regional? you make a motion for a regional impact as well. Just, I was just Anybody have a motion for yeah. regional impact? Motion that is no regional impact. Motion made by Mr. Belmore. Second. Second by Mr. Barry. Discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed?
Motion to approve the lot line adjustment with the four conditions with the change from easement to restricted covenant. Motion by, motion made by Mr. Belmore, seconded by Mr. Horton. Discussion? All those in favor raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Item B, Altus Engineering is seeking site plan approval to expand the motor vehicle services, rental trades used on a property located at 157 Route 108 in the Commercial CI District, Commercial Industrial CI District, assesses map 63, lot 11, site number 16-2024. Director Mears. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The applicant is proposing to construct a 1,230 square foot addition to the existing structure. The applicant is also proposing to add 4,181 square feet of paving of existing gravel and parking area. There will also be a new dumpster enclosure on site. Um, the addition is being provided to have a wash bear bay area for cars. This use is currently be done, being done outside in the parking lot. Uh, the pr property is located in the commercial industrial district, uh, motor vehicle services establishment, which is an allowed use. Uh, this uh, motor vehicle service was established in 2004. There are a number of waivers uh, as part of this application and staff supports those waivers. The applicant is seeking the following waivers from the section. Landscape islands in the parking lot, curbing at the landscaping areas, required number of shade trees at the perimeter of the parking lot, parking lot screening from public ways, traffic impact study, bike rack, and EV charging station. Uh, the applicant is bringing the site into compliance with our site plan regulations. Uh, so staff recommends that the planning board accept this application as complete. Entertain a motion to accept the application. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Berry. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? It's time to invite Altus Engineering All to right. for the record, make I'm a presentation. From Altus Engineering. Here on behalf of Bob Dumaris, uh, he owns the property as well as the two adjacent parcels. Um, can I put the screen up and just do a quick little presentation? Cool. really is inconvenient for you guys, isn't it? <laughs> All right. We are at 157 Route 108. And if I can find the right button here. Oops. Just to give you the lay of the land. Oh, no. What happened? Okay. Uh, Hilltop is right here. National Guard's right here. This is um, Midway Collision. Used to be a car dealership. And we got the pool guy right on the corner here. This is Willing Drive that eventually can get out to Target and Home Depot. Uh, the site here is 18 acres. Uh, used to be a junkyard back in the day, as you can see the mess back in here. Uh, this existing building is still there. It's used for storage by the applicant now. We're looking at this tiny little chunk right here up front. Uh, that building was built in the 60s. Uh, it's been there for a long time, so long that DOT doesn't even have a driveway permit for it. Uh, it has an existing septic and it has town water. And we are in the CI zone, and what we're looking to do is bring in um, from the outside existing car washing activities. Right now, they wash outside. This would be a two-bay private car wash, not open to the public, no flashing lights or anything like that, uh, like we have elsewhere in town. Um, no new employees, no new retail space, no increase in the fleet, nothing. Very simple. Um, and we're adding 11 new parking spaces, paved parking spaces here and a new dumpster enclosure in the back. Uh, this area is all gravel right now, so there's no increase in, in impervious, but we did add a drip edge along the perimeter to catch all the roof runoff. That uh, treats everything from the roof and allows for a uh, decrease in peak rates of runoff. Again, this area of Summersworth, as we know, is great soils, so no issues there. Uh, no wetlands or anything like that. I've also got five trees along the perimeter here. Uh, those uh, I did pick in consultation with the landscape architect, but we don't have a landscape architect's plan here because I figured five trees, it wasn't worth going to that extent. Uh, and that is one of the waivers before you. 
Uh, the one really unique thing about this is the way the wash water is treated. Right in here is a 7,500 gallon tank, and that's just a holding tank. So every time they wash, it goes to the floor drain, goes into the tank, and they pump it out whenever it's full. Uh, that will have a float and an alarm in it, uh, so they'll know when it's 85% uh, full. So there's the details of it right there. Very straightforward, very simple. Uh, one light on the entire building, that's it. There's plenty of light in the area. There's lights on the building now, and the adjacent car dealership has obviously got plenty of light. Uh, so they felt that was adequate for their needs. And then we get to the building. This is the existing building, um, not too fancy. What they want to do, for some reason, and I can't explain it, they wanted to change the facade to add this sort of Quonset hut looking thing, which is very unique. It's a faux front. It sort of sticks up I don't know, like a parapet. And then this is the two bay garage in the back here. Uh, same siding, same roof and everything like that. So it's just an extension of it. So it should fit right in. I just thought the Quonset looking thing was very unique, uh, but it's what they wanted to go with. Um, I can kill the presentation if you guys want. I know you guys want to get back to your seats. So do you have any questions while I have it up? May okay. I have some for you. What's that? You may have some for uh, some. Okay. Do you want me to leave it up then? After the presentation, you all set with. I'm all set with that. If you guys are. Okay. Okay. Open with public hearing. Does anybody care to comment on this application? Director Mears, is there any? Oh, you. Sorry. <laughs> uh, good evening. My name is Becky Marcinkovich. I'm the property development and facilities manager for Enterprise Rent a Car, and we're a tenant at the site. So um, I just wanted to step in and say that um, this project is really going to help out our business, especially after the kind of post COVID um, situation. Uh, being able to clean our vehicles on site uh, in, a, in a facility where we can keep them clean instead of our employees standing in the dirt um, is really uh, helpful. We are not currently washing um, outside in the back. That's not what we're doing, uh, but we are vacuuming um, and bringing the vehicles off site to a car wash. So this will really help out our business. If there are any questions for regarding our business, I'd be happy to answer them as well. Okay, uh, I guess I have one. Uh, uh, this has nothing to do with uh, like the old midway no. This is a separate parcel. There's nothing parcel, going on. Parcel, separate business. Okay. Correct. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else care to comment? Is there any correspondence, Director Mayors? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, close public hearing. We'll continue with questions from the board. Mr. Horton. I'll just add to the conversation. Uh, I was actually there last week and rented. From uh, from there, but uh, also just kind of what what you've already specified. Uh, you guys are kind of busting at the seams. Like uh, parking is you know, not great, so I think everything you're doing here is uh, going to be a great improvement and uh, improve the look and and operation of the site. So uh, I got no I got no um, objections, and uh, I think it's a good overall project. And I do apologize. I didn't know Becky was coming tonight, so. <laughs> Mr. Richardson. I just want to say thank you. I mean, it, it, the property is needs some help, and, and uh, it looks like you're going in that direction, and, and I appreciate it. Um, when I looked at the plan, I was right there in front, where right now it's basically a dirt driveway. Is there any reason why that area is, is not getting improved? I have a feeling that Mr. Demers is going to end up paving some of that, so we left that option open. Right now, it's more of a snow dump in the winter. That's where both sites tend to push their snow because he does own the adjacent parcel. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that answers the question. So, <laughs> <laughs> if that's what it's been, I haven't noticed that that the snow has been going there. That's but that's yeah. what I was told. So. Yeah. Okay. Good. Other questions on the board? Mr. Hibberman. Yeah. That. That second building in the back, that, yep. that warehouse thing, is it going to be doing any improvements or? As far as I know, it's going to be as is. I mean, we'd no hardly even extend the survey back up. there. It's just, it's just for storage, as far as I know. Okay. That's all I have. Other questions on the board? Seeing none, entertain a uh, motion for regional impact. Mr. Richardson. Yes, I'll move that there is no regional impact. Motion made by Mr. Richardson. Second. Second by Mr. Belmore. Discussion. Those in favor, raise your right hand. 
Opposed? Next item is waiver request. Anybody have a motion for uh, waiver number one? Mr. Horton. Sure, I, make a, I move that the request of Altus Engineering for a waiver from Section 10.1DD of the Site Plan Review Regulations requirement for a full boundary survey be approved. Motion made by Mr. Horton. Second. Second by Mr. Barry. Discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? I move that the request of Altus Engineering for waiver from Section 12.4, et cetera, the site plan review regulations requirement for landscape islands in the parking lot be approved. Motion made by Mr. Belmore, second by Mr. Horton. Discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver number three. Is there a motion? Mr. Horton. Thank you. I move that the request of all this engineer and for a waiver from section 12.4.B.8.4 of the site plan regulations requiring curbing at the landscape areas be approved. Motion made by Mr. Horton. Second. Seconded by Mr. Haberman. Discussion. All those in favor raise your right hand. Opposed. Waiver number four. Is there a motion? Move the request of Altus Engineering for a waiver from Section 12.4, et cetera, of site plan review regulations requirement to provide less than the required number of parking lot perimeter trees be approved. Motion made by Mr. Belmore. Second by Mr. Horton. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? And waiver number five. Is there a motion? Trying to share the wealth here, guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mr. Horton. I move that the request of Aldous Engineering for, for a waiver from Section 12.4.B, so on, of the re site plan re review regulations requiring to provide parking lot screening from public ways be approved. Second. Motion made by Mr. Horton, second by Mr. Belmore. Discussion. I mean, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver number six. I remove that the request of Baltus Engineering from this section 12.4.D of the Site Plan Review Regulations for a waiver in regards to requiring a traffic study be approved. Motion made by Mr. Belmore, second by Mr. Horton. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? I move that the request, number of, seven. I Mr. Move that the Mr. request of Altus Engineering for a waiver from the appropriate section of the Site Plan Review Regulations requirement to provide lockable bicycle storage be approved. Motion made by Mr. Belmore, second by Mr. Barry. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver number eight. Is there a motion? Mr. Horton. Jeremy, he's almost ready to go. <laughs> I move that the request of Altus Engineering for a waiver from Section 12.4.D.7 of the Site Plan Regulation requiring to provide electrical vehicle charging stations be approved. Motion made by Mr. Horton. Second by Mr. Rhodes. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver number nine. Is there a motion? Mr. Richardson. I move that the request of Altus Engineering uh, for a waiver from Section 12.5 CI of the Site Plan Review Regulations requirements to construct sidewalks be approved. Motion made by Mr. Richardson, second by Mr. Rhodes. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. Waiver number 10, is there a motion? No, ten is okay. I move the request of Altus Engineering for a waiver from the appropriate sections of our site plan regulations requirement for a landscape architect to prepare the landscape plan be approved. 
Motion made by Mr. Belmore, seconded by Mr. Horton. Discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Wave is granted. Wave number 11. Is there a motion? <coughs> Mr. Richardson. Sure. I move that uh, the request of Altus Engineering for a waiver of Section 12.19 uh, of the Site Plan Review Regulations uh, re requirement of third-party review of the drainage report be approved. Motion made by Mr. Richardson. Second. <clears throat> Second by Mr. Berry. Discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Wave is granted. <coughs> Next site plan, uh, Director Mears, would you like to uh, review the conditions of approval? Yes, number one, plan revisions. All waivers shall be granted on the plan, or noted on the plan. Revise the stormwater inspection and maintenance manual to indicate that yearly reports shall be submitted by July 1st annually to Department of Development Services. The unpa unpaved area at the northwest corner of the lot along Route 108 frontage shall be loam and seeded and not used for parking unless the pavement area is approved to be expanded. A note shall be added to the plan to certify that all aspects of the development comply with ADA standards. Conditions that must be met prior to final approval, the plan shall bear the stamp and signature of an engineer and licensed uh, land surveyor. Federal and state permits shall be obtained. Conditions uh, to be completed prior to the start of site work. C construction cost estimate for the project shall be submitted. A pre-construction meeting is required. The drainage improvements shall be inspected by city staff prior to the issuance of certificate of occupancy. A performance surety in the amount agreeable to the Department of Development Services, but no less than 25% of the cost of site construction. The applicant shall apply for a new water and sewer connection permit. Erosion controls shall be properly installed prior to any construction. Uh, landscape survival security, 10% of the total cost of landscape at a minimum of $500 <clears throat> and all applicants requiring a stormwater management and erosion control plan shall be submitted relevant to pollutant accounting information to the director of planning and community development as required by the public works director. Uh, conditions applicable during and after construction building plans shall bear the stamp of a certified fire protection engineer licensed in New Hampshire to certify compliance with all egress, emergency lighting, smoke, heat, and CO detection systems, fire alarm monitoring and reporting systems, fire suppression systems, or any other fire protection or related life safety systems required by national or New Hampshire code. A copy of the completed stormwater inspection and maintenance log shall be provided to development services annually on or before July 1st. All landscaping shown on the plan shall be maintained and any dead or dying vegetation shall be replaced in a timely manner. All outdoor lighting shall be downlit and shielded so no direct light is visible from adjacent properties and roadways. There shall be no parking of cars on unpaved services and as-built plans will be required. I know that we had discussed those, Michelle. I had one thought on the state permits though, DOT. Um, as I mentioned before, this site has no DOT permit because it's so old but we've submitted for a new DOT permit for the existing site and the addition, but I have no confidence that they're gonna get it to us in any short amount of time, uh, given their track record. Um, if it's amenable to the board, we'd like to have the CO conditioned upon, that, upon receiving that permit from the state. Because if it's gonna take six months for the state to issue a permit, they're sitting there, they can't, pull, they can't pull a building permit. So the project's stuck until the state gets their act together. That amenable to the board? Mm -hmm. I would be I would be open to that as well, yeah. Okay. Is there a letter? Which letter are we looking at? Or which uh, section? Uh, trying to find it. Uh, it is uh, conditions that must be met prior to final approval. Federal and state permits. Okay, yeah. To be, yeah. <laughs> to be amended. All set. Entertain a site plan motion. Mr. Horton. I have one other question real quick first though. Um, 
does 2A still apply where we granted the waiver for the survey? Does 2A still apply? Okay. Thank you. Well, I mean, the, the survey does have a stamp on it already, so you've got so, it. Okay. So, okay. And okay. I think you'd want a stamp on the as built too. So just, I'm good with that. I, I, I wasn't sure. So. Yeah, I'd leave it there. Thank you for that. So I'm just trying to um, figure out where 2B lies, where we move 2B to. So before uh, Section 4F, is that what we're looking at? Is that correct? It could go under four. Okay. Four conditions applicable during and after construction. Okay, thank you. And just uh, state that it's prior to certificate of occupancy. Mr. Horton. Move that the request of Altus Engineering for site plan approval to expand the motor vehicle services to be approved with the conditions outlined in the director's memo moving four, I'm sorry, moving 2B to section four. Motion made by Mr. Horton, second by Mr. Berry. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Item C, Christopher, Christopher Schulte is seeking conceptual review for a motor vehicle repair used on property located at 40 Main Street in the Business B District, Assessors Map 11, Lot 204, Site Number 18-2024. Director Mayors. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this has come before the Planning Board before for Motor Vehicle Repair Garage at 400 Main Street. Uh, this applicant is proposing that use. This would require a variance, uh, this use. Uh, he's just coming in for some feedback. Uh, this property is located in a special parking overlay, uh, which does not require any on-site parking. And this is a 0.19 acre parcel that was, uh, previous use was professional service. Again, this is just a conceptual review. Thank you. I'd like to invite, uh, I believe, Mr. Schulte. So uh, my name is Brian Dano. I'm the broker uh, that the owner hired. Uh, as um, Michelle mentioned, we were here about a year ago in July with uh, the same use of a uh, mechanic. Unfortunately, while we were going through the full site plan review, um, he found another place to rent. And so um, we've been, you know, working dig dil digital, I can't speak today, diligently to try and find other tenants um, to you know, serve the needs of kind of filling the building and, and giving it a use again. Um, and so we were lucky enough to find uh, Chris, who is a uh, Berwick native and would like to, to rent the, the building from us. Um, uh, so one of the things that I did want to mention is that the feedback that you all gave last year, we uh, have attempted to put into the building in terms of uh, aesthetics. Um, it, the sides and back of the building will be painted actually this weekend. It's something that we've been working on for some time, but we do want to work with the city to make it a aesthetically pleasing building and, and something that works for all parties. So with that, I'll, I'll hand it over to Chris. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for having me. Um, really nice to meet all of you. I know some friendly faces here. I know Michelle and Anna. Thank you so much for all of your help through this. Um, I guess I'll just start with letting you guys get to know me. Um, my name's Christopher Schulte. Um, I'm the owner of Gas Money Automotive. Um, I'm 30 years old, and like Brian said, I, I grew up in Berwick, Maine, right next door. Um, I'm a graduate of Noble High School. Um, I own a home in Berwick, so I'm very local and I'm a functioning member of this community. Um, currently, I'm an ASC certified service manager for Meineke Car Care in Rochester, New Hampshire. Um, as you can tell, I came right here from work, still wearing my work clothes. Um, I've been doing this since 2021 at Meineke. Um, we've got a 4.9 star rating on Google, um, something I'm pretty proud of out of 731 reviews. Um, my prior experience to that was as a Volkswagen Master Certified Service Advisor. 
Um, I did that from 2017 to 2021. Um, my dream has always been to, you know, open a shop and, you know, just have the American dream of having something that no one can take from me. Um, and I'd love to do that right here, you know, in a place that I call home that's very local to me. Um, in, my, in my current role, I perform all daily operations of the business. I act as owner. Um, these duties, they consist of answering every phone call, uh, greeting and gathering information to write up every work order, um, I create every estimate. I dispatch all of the work to the techs to complete the work. Um, I order all of the parts. I call every customer and I review all of their needed work. Um, I order all shop supplies, including heating oil. Uh, I manage disposal of all waste, including dumpster, uh, scrap metal, tires, waste fluids, all of those things. Um, I work on and I repair all of the shop equipment as needed. Um, I work on vehicles as well as needed, but I do have a staff that does that for the most part. Um, I manage all expenses, like profit and loss. Um, I cash out every customer, maintain contact with the customers that are carrying over, as I plan to do so in my new location, hopefully. Um, I submit all end of day and end of week reports, create my cash outs, deposits, um, clean customer scene areas. Um, I even plow the parking lot. Um, and I try to really maintain a clean image of the outside of my building. Um, and if any of you guys are familiar with Rochester and drive by that Walmart over there, that's my building right there. Um, I'm giving you all this information. I know it's kind of a lot. Uh, just to try to help explain what qualifies me um, to, to run a clean, well-maintained shop that will thrive in our downtown community uh, for years to come. Um, I'd like to note that, you know, as a longtime member of this community, that I see all the improvements that you guys have been making to the downtown. And, um, you know, I, I respect that and I totally want to add to that. Let's see if I can flip this page. Um, I, I also, I respect the reasoning that the, that the zoning has changed. Um, I, I totally understand the goal here. Uh, we wanna put our best foot forward in our frontward facing walkable areas. Um, so I'd like to address some of the concerns from the last meeting here in July of 2023 that you guys had. Um, first, I want to really express my willingness to work with the city uh, to make my business fit here in this location. Um, I want to present a clean, welcoming, and even aesthetically pleasing image for the exterior of the building and the land that surrounds that. Um, this would include you know, adding planters outside. Um, and I know, as Brian said, that the ownership is uh, painting this weekend. They're also doing landscaping around the building uh, to help improve, you know, the aesthetics of it. Um, I'd like to approach Rulos on paying them to share the dumpster that's next door so we don't add clutter to that lot. Um, I've been told by ownership that that's something that they've considered offering to other tenants uh, that, you know, look to move into that building. Um, I, I plan to keep all scrap metal and tires behind the building. There's a gravel space behind it that those things can fit and that's out of sight. Um, I, I promise to keep work inside of the shop. I know it was a concern having vehicles outside partially apart being worked on out in the parking lot. Um, that's not how I operate my current business and I don't plan to do so here either. Um, plenty of space inside to work on cars. Um, let me see. Um, I, I plan to drain all waste oil and any contaminants into 55 gallon barrels inside of the building. We won't keep that stuff outside. Um, and I'll you know, get that stuff pumped out by a company called Crystal Clean. I currently work with them. Um, they'll come, they'll pump out all waste fluids and they'll dispose of that stuff safely. And I'll do that at my expense, obviously. Um, I plan to clean any spills on the floor with speedy dry absorbent. Uh, much like a kitty litter, it'll soak up all the fluids and then you just dispose of it safely. Um, that should, you know, keep you from needing to have like oil water separators and things of that sort that I think would be incredibly expensive to add to that building. Um, I currently operate by appointment only. I plan to continue to do so. Um, I know we had spoke at the last meeting last year about the I need a minute guys you know can you come check this out um, I'm by appointment only um, let me see 
I, I do understand the concern of adding an automotive repair shop to the aesthetic of the revitalized community that we have downtown. Um, the, the building in the past has been used for this use and you know currently it's right next to another one. Um, I'd prefer to have a shop that is so clean and so well maintained that it just stands out as the standard in our downtown. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll close with just saying thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you for your dedication and commitment to making our community better. Um, I would really, really love to be a part of it. Great, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Questions to the board? Mr. Belmore. Uh, you seem like a very uh, forthcoming young man with, with great potential and great, great aspirations, but uh, I don't think this has any place in our downtown. That's why we zoned out this type of operation. In fact, uh, some people may recall, I'll say for the sake of discussion, a handful of years ago, a variance was granted to up by Profile Garage to do a similar operation. Um, and uh, they were granted a variance and the city council uh, was motivated enough to go to court and have that rescinded. So I think it doesn't necessarily, just my own opinion, not necessarily the board's opinion, or will it be the ZBA's opinion or the council's opinion if this moves forward, but uh, revitalization of the downtown, um, there's other uses for this type of building to be creative. Um, the police station right across the way is going to have children there and, and uh, so forth. And I, I just don't think this fits in with the master plan and the revitalization of downtown. That's why we zoned it out um, in regards to further development. So I have, I have some serious concerns about um, what this board would do, um, which is different from the ZBA's application and their responsibility. So uh, I just thought I'd share that, that there's been past action taken to stick with the zoning that is currently in place and to work towards more um, businesses that draw people in, like restaurants and that sort of thing, and apartments. Uh, and that's what we've been striving for for quite a few years now. So I thought I'd at least share that so there's no surprises moving forward if this comes back. I'll have some concerns about how we address uh, the site itself um, if this moves forward. So I don't know if that was helpful or not, but I thought I should share some of my comments and feelings in regards to it. So no offense to you. Um, again, um, I'm sure you're going to be successful with, at some point with, with a new business, but thank you. Mr. Horton. I'll just piggyback on what the city manager alluded to. Uh, I'm in the same boat. You know, I think we got a, a city, uh, a downtown that's being revitalized and it's moving in the right direction. And with the um, revitaliz revitalization of the uh, old police station being uh, kind of a the thought as a uh, on the go type deli and a play place for kids, I just say, you know, I, I, I think of some of the issues that we have with other local uh, repair shops, meaning. They gotta, they gotta do a test drive cars. You know, they gotta use tools. It's just, it doesn't fit into the, the master plan like, like that was said. So, uh, you seem like a great guy, and, and I wish you the best. And I hope you find a place here in Summersworth that does suit your needs. And, um, and we'll go from there, I guess. Thanks. Thank you so much. I guess comment I made the last time was uh, this has been a uh, service station for many years. I don't think it's uh, it's out of place in the neighborhood. Uh, in fact, it could lend to the mixed use of the area. There's already one next door. So, so I don't agree in probably adding any uh, future development, but this is an existing spot that's been a garage for many years, so I have no problem with it. Mr. Rhodes. I add a voice of agreement to the chair's comments here. We have two facilities in downtown, uh, both of which were originally up for a conceptual review tonight that have prior lives as automotive facilities. Um, speaking personally, I wish you were looking at the BP station because that's more of an eyesore than this building is, but they're both currently eyesores and both have sat vacant for years. Um, given that and acknowledging some of the difficulties we've had with other repair shops in recent years, um, I think one run the right way 
wouldn't necessarily be out of place in the downtown, and it would be a step up from the current conditions. Um, if you were to move forward with this site, I'd expect that the board would want several conditions on it that would help ensure that we didn't have another repeat of situations we've seen in the past with similar facilities. Um, but I think it's pretty clear we've got some differences of opinion on the board around potential automotive uses. I just don't want to let us be the perfect, be the enemy of the good when we have two years vacant sites downtown that don't have tenants actively clamoring for them. Other comments? Can I add? Um, I super flexible. Like I'd, I'd love to work with you guys on you know any. Do you want to speak into the mic? Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I'd I'd really I'd love to work with you guys on any concerns you might have with that. Um, I'm I'm pretty easygoing and approachable on things like that. And um, you know, like I said when I was making the speech here, you know, I'm more than willing to bend, you know, and and try to make this work in our community here. Okay. Any other questions from the board? I think uh, good. Hey, we're all set. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. If I can add one thing, from the from the landlord's perspective, obviously, if there's concerns about specific items and they're conditional, like we have to get through obviously zoning first. But if we get to you guys again, uh, I don't think that would be an issue of having concerns specifically addressed as part of the plan set. Um, and we'll, we'll leave it with that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Item D has been uh, removed. Next item E, any new business that may come before the board? Director Mayors. None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Next item F, workshop business, election of officers. Director Mayors. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's that time of year to elect uh, a chair and a vice chair for the planning board again. Okay. If there's any motions. Anybody have nominations for nominations. chair? I'd like to nominate uh, Mr. LaHoyer. Second. Thank you. Any other nominations? I'll make another nomination. Mr. Rose as Mr. Rhodes as vice chair. Second. There we go. Anybody uh move for those slate of offices to be elected? Motion made by Mr. Belmore, seconded by Mr. Horton. Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Thank you for Thank you. accepting. Thank you. <laughs> Communications and miscellaneous. Does anybody have a motion to adjourn? No, uh, communications. There, there, was some, there was something in your packet. Um, the um, from Director Mayors, uh, uh, the code officer, Director Mayors, and I talked to uh, Bridgestone America Incorporated, the home office for the uh, Firestone uh, repair facility on High Street that we have had issues with and brought back for compliance hearings. And um, we worked out an, an arrangement where they did install finally the automatic door open closers and you see the signage and our, our code guy um, Shane went there and had them demonstrated and so forth and they've set it set some policies as far as um, if they do test drives not to go around the, the, the uh, neighborhood so we worked out an agreement um, so unless if you have any questions uh, hopefully Michelle or I can answer it so our code guy will continue to make regular checks on the property to ensure that it stays in compliance so it was a little bit of a long haul but we may have finally gotten there to appease serious issues for our uh, residents in the neighborhood mr Rhodes <coughs> just wanted to comment on that as somebody who was I think pretty clearly upset with the owners and operators of that facility um, I know it's been a long push by all three of you uh, Bob uh, Michelle and, and Shane to get this dealt with Thank you for pushing on that. I know there's a lot of residents that are very pleased you got this result. 
Mr. Richardson. <clears throat> I've got a couple of questions, I guess. Is Walmart aware that they're going to be using that road for their <clears throat> testing, that entrance way for them? Is that something that was addressed with them at all? The reason why I'm concerned is because when we heard from the neighbors, we heard about slamming on brakes, we heard about, you know, goose in the vehicle and that kind of thing in their neighborhood. And that, that there's, there's so much traffic in that entrance and exit that I would, that to me, if that's the kind of driving they're going to be doing going in and out of there, that's a disaster waiting to happen. I'm not sure what road you're talking about. Where are they going to be turning around? Where, you know, they're going down to the light and then they're <clears throat> turning in and they're going down and turning around. Oh, forget about that, man. And, uh, you know, I mean, it looks like they're just going to go in, go down the end, turn around and go out. But I'm concerned about how they're driving. From what we heard from the neighbors about how they were driving through their neighborhood, this is a major entrance into Walmart with a lot of traffic. And I would hate to see that kind of driving going on there. Well, if they're just driving in, going down the end, turning around and going out, I'm okay with that. But hitting the brakes and goosing the vehicle, no. Well, we'll have to have just a wait and see attitude. Hopefully we didn't push uh, part of the problem to mm -hmm. another location. We'll see. You have to monitor it. No, I hope no one gets back ended and rammed and vehicles, oh, you know, and people. Yeah, I mean, you know. Any other comments? Entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion made by Mr. Belmore, seconded by Mr. Barry. Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Thank you very much.